You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Welcome to My Strategy with author and personal growth coach, John M. Hawkins. John will provide coaching and inspiration, motivation and advice on your personal development in order to help you with the best decision making possible. So now, please welcome the host of My Strategy, John M. Hawkins. Hello, everyone, and welcome to My Strategy. I'm John M. Hawkins. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We're very happy to be here with you today. My Strategy radio show episodes are live. They're on Saturdays at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Very happy to be here with you today. Saturday is a great day of the week to reflect on the prior week and think about what you've accomplished and make plans for the upcoming week. And keeping in mind that now or any time is a good time to assess your personal strategy, and specifically your personal development strategy, which is what this show is all about here. Our My Strategy radio show continues to grow. We're available on iHeart, iTunes, Player FM, YouTube, SoundCloud, Spreaker, and many more digital platforms. You can find me on most social media platforms. My Twitter handle is at Hawkins John. That's at Hawkins John. And my website is johnmhawkins.com. Just like anything in life, we need to have a strategy and a plan to help us reach our goals because the best laid plans don't always work. This week we're going to be talking about the way we think, not what we think. So if you have any good stories, tips, or tricks on how you think, I would love, love, love to hear from you. All right, so on this show, we're going to be talking about the way you think and specifically what your thinking, what is your thinking mode. We're going to talk about the importance of how we think. Talk a little bit about divergent, convergent thinking. Help you determine when to use which type of thinking mode and provide you tips and tricks to help you develop your strategy to solve all sorts of problems. I think this is really important in today's time, age. You know, at one point we did have the ability to think along specific lines, to focus on tasks, which is, you know, what we do from a personal development and strategic perspective. We want to narrow in, look at facts, figures, data, and come to a hypothesis. We hope to prove that hypothesis. And then we have truth. More and more, we are getting so many data points, facts, figures thrown at us. It makes it difficult for us to, to process that information. So we're going to talk about the different types of thinking, specifically how, to, how you think, rather than what you think. We're going to cover a little bit about, uh, we're going to talk ex- a lot about uh, divergent thinking and where you need to fail fast, zig when it, where others zag, rear. I'd like to start off by a, with an article by Krista Gearhart. She talks about three types of thinking and why they are important. She says, how often do you think about thinking? For most of us, the answer would be not very. As we manage our lives and do our jobs, we tend to employ different approaches to thinking without really being aware of it. And for the most part, that works. 
However, times keep on changing, and it's importantly and it's increasingly important for us to be more conscious of how we think and develop our thinking skills. So this is especially important if you work in learning and development role because you're responsible for developing those skills in others and helping them succeed in this changing world. So Krista focuses in this specific piece on three different important types of thinking skills, critical, strategic, and entrepreneurial entrepreneurial skills and she talks about other types of thinking um, that uh, she f- covers in other articles uh, specifically in today's show we're going to also include abstract analytical creative and more i think her key point here though uh, in this article is that um, being able to think and having thinking skills is increasingly important She says, in a future job report, the World Economic Forum shares its 2022 skills outlook. And this is a listing of the top skills that employers will demand in the global economy of 2022. And she highlights some of those top growing skills from this report. Now, I think it's important also to note we've done uh, podcasts on skills before. But there are hard skills and soft skills, and the soft skills are those things that are difficult for us to measure, and the hard skills are those skills by which we have a means to test our knowledge, evaluate your performance, and ultimately give you a grade or a rating on that skill. So as you think about these skills, you know, these really are more soft skills than hard skills. So it's going to be difficult for us to test many of them, but there might be ways to do and test others. So the top skills are analytical thinking and innovation, active learning and learning strategies, creativity, originality, and initiative, technology design and programming. Now note that some of these are soft skills, some are hard skills. So the technology, design, and programming, we have a way to test for that. Creativity, originality, and initiative. You know, it's creativity is subjective, but, um, you know, at the same time, it's important for us to, if we can, develop those, those thinking skills. Complex problem-solving skills, leadership and social influence, emotional intelligence, reasoning, problem-solving, and ideation systems analysis and evaluation goes on to say it's interesting that at least seven of the top 10 hinge on one or more of thinking mentioned above for many roles individuals will need to be proficient in critical strategic and entrepreneurial so she goes on to define what she says are critical thinking and entrepreneurial skills She talks about the link between critical thinking and confidence, how it's important to develop. Critical thinking is an effortful and continuous analysis and revision of one's thinking process and output for reasoning and logic and to eliminate bias in order to increase the probability of your desired outcome. Another one she focuses on is strategic thinking. Strategic thinking is a mental process that is applied when one is trying to achieve some goal or set of goals, whereas critical thinking is all about analysis, logic, and reason. Strategic thinking is about planning. Strategic thinking does not exist in a vacuum. Strategic thinkers must typically employ solid critical thinking skills in order to analyze and understand their current situations then layer in strategic thinking to forge a path. Entrepreneurial thinking. Entrepreneurial thinking can also be called creative thinking. It involves seeing things differently than most others. Entrepreneurial thinkers are able to identify opportunities that others may miss. They're able to see patterns. She says here that entrepreneurial thinking doesn't exist in a vacuum. And I think it's important to note that As we go through today's episode, you're going to find that, you know, each of these thinking modes are useful in specific, 
instances. And the key for us is to know when to employ which mode and why. You're listening to My Strategy. I'm your host, John M. Hawkins, coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. When we come back, we're going to talk about some of those common types of thinking modes. We'll be right back. Have you ever felt like no one is listening or you're not getting the honest attention you deserve? Do you even know the kind of attention you want or need? You are not alone. Alice Aspen March is here to help. Thanks to Alice, through her epiphany and research over the word attention, there are solutions to the attention dilemma. Worldwide audiences have been enthralled and engaged for over 40 years with her visionary and pioneering observations. The kind of attention we get and give is vital to improving our lives and society. Alice and her weekly guests review game-changing insights for transforming and improving our understanding of attention, providing techniques for creating healthier and empowering behavior. Get a new perspective on a mainstream word. Tune into Why Our Attention Matters for fresh and thought-provoking conversations every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern on BoldBraveMedia.com and the TuneIn Radio app. Dr. R.C. will share extraordinary resources and services that promote educational success as well as making a difference in the lives of all social workers as well as the lives of children, adolescents, and teens of today. She will have open discussions addressing many of the issues that we face about our youth and how being employed in the uniquely skilled profession of social work for over 18 years has taught invaluable lessons through her personal experiences. She will also provide real-life facts, examples, and personal stories that will confirm that why serving as a child advocate is extremely beneficial when addressing the needs of the whole child. Listen live Saturdays, 10 a.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network and tune in radio as Dr. R.C. will provide thought-provoking information that will empower, encourage, and strengthen students, families, and communities across our nation. You can also visit her at soarwithkatie.com. Hello and welcome back, everyone. I'm John M. Hawkins. The show is called My Strategy. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Very happy to be here with you today. Right before the break, we were talking about what type of thinker are you? We posed the question, what type of thinker are you? We talked a little bit about some of the different ways we can think. We're not talking about what to think today. Because everybody has their own opinion, and they choose to think about what they choose to think about. Based on what's important, what's interesting to them in their lives, perhaps what someone else has told them. In this segment, I want to talk a little bit about the different types of thinking modes out there. And I've got an article by Janie Davis talks about the different types of thinking. She says, can your personality be formed from different types of thinking? It's an interesting question. If it can, and then if it can be formed by different types of thinking, how can you take advantage of these different ways or modes of thinking? She goes on to say, what has thinking got to do with our personalities? Well, Would you describe yourself as a logical person, a creative person? Are you a rational person, or do you prefer to think in abstract terms? We use different types of thinking skills every second of the day, whether it is something as important as contemplating the end of a relationship or reaching for the last biscuits on the table. She says it stands to reason that thinking in certain ways has an effect on our personalities. Furthermore, research shows that there are different types of thinking, and each one influences the kind of person we are. Which one are you, she asks. She talks about a couple different types here. I think there's about seven or so. First is abstract Abstract thinkers are able to relate seemingly random things with each other. 
This is because they can see the big picture. They make the connections that find difficult for others to see. They have the ability to look beyond what is obvious and search for hidden meaning. They can read between the lines and enjoy solving cryptic puzzles. They don't like routine and they get bored easily. Are you an abstract thinker? Do you know any abstract thinkers, those who are looking for patterns in life and seeing the big picture? I know some people who are abstract thinkers. I know many who are abstract thinkers. In fact, I know many who fall, I know people who fall into all of these categories. You might be an abstract thinker, you might not. What about an analytical thinker? Analytical thinkers like to separate a whole into its basic parts in order to examine these parts and their relationships. They are great problem solvers and have a structured and methodical way of approaching tasks. This type of thinker will seek answers and use logic rather than emotional thinking in life. However, they have a tendency to overthink things and can ruminate on the same subject for months. Do you know anyone who's an analytical thinker? Perhaps do you fall into that analytical thinking category? There's times when I ruminate on things for months at a time, years at a time. Of course, you time box them and don't always focus on them, but when they come back up, you, you can tend to overanalyze them. Creative thinkers. Are you a creative thinker? Do you know someone who's a creative thinker? Well, the creative thinkers think outside the box and will come up with ingenious solutions to solve their dilemmas in life. They like to break away from the traditions and norms of society when it comes to new ideas and new ways of thinking. They can sometimes be ridiculed as society prefers to keep the status quo. Creative thinkers also court jealousy if they manage to follow their dreams and work in a creative field. Concrete thinking. Concrete thinking focuses on the physical world rather than an abstract world. It's all about thinking of objects or ideas as specific items rather than as theoretical representation in a more general idea. Concrete thinkers like hard facts, figures, and statistics. For example, you will not get any philosophers who think in concrete terms. Children think in concrete terms and at its very basic and literal form of understanding. Critical thinking, which we did cover in the prior segment. But critical thinking, according to this author, takes analytical thinking up another level. Critical thinkers exercise careful evaluation or judgment in order to determine the authenticity, accuracy, worth, validity, or value of something. And rather than strictly breaking down the information, critical thinking explores other elements that could have an influence on conclusions. Two more here. Convergent thinking. Convergent thinking is the process of combining finite number of perspectives or ideas to find a single solution. Convergent thinkers will target these possibilities or converge them to come up with a single solution. Divergent thinking, by contrast, divergent thinking is the opposite of convergent thinking. It is a way of exploring an infinite number of solutions to find one that is effective. So instead of starting off with a set of possibilities and converging on the answer, it goes far and wide as necessary and moves outwards in search of the solution. Article goes on to talk about how you can take advantage of different types of thinking. You might be more like a natural problem solver. Think of the famous sleuth, super sleuth, from Sherlock Holmes to Inspector Frost, and you will see convergent thinking at play. By gathering various bits of information, convergent thinkers are able to piece the puzzles together and come up with a logical answer to the question, who has done it?
Convergent thinking includes analytical and concrete types of thinking. If you're a convergent thinking thinker, you're more likely to be analytical or a concrete thinker. I think the question here is, you know, you know, not which thinking mode do we need to use, but it's understanding the different thinking modes and then asking ourselves the important question, which is when do we use it? You're listening to my strategy. I'm your host, John M. Hawkins, coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. When we come back, we're going to talk about the power of divergence and convergent thinking. We'll be right back. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern, on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy EasySense.com and learn how, with your help, we can fight these horrific brain disorders. That's EasySense.com to learn more and help support the Broderick Foundation. Certified professional coach Pamela Reeves can help you with your relationships. Motivational and image coaching are just some of the ways she can help you enhance all aspects of your life. Her book, Is It Love or Merely a Sick Attachment, helps readers clearly distinguish healthy, loving relationships from toxic ones. Ms. Reeves has put her words into action through Ray of Hope Kenya, an international initiative that provides outreach to victims of abusive relationships there with the goal of helping them rebuild their lives and the tools to avoid abuse. Ms. Reeves operates various business interest through her umbrella network, Nella LLC, and credits her success to her diverse work experience. Whatever your goals, whether striking a balance, reinventing your image, or simply lifting your lifestyle, Pamela Reeves will help you achieve them. Your life, your call. Dial 410-902-5715 or email Pamela at pamreg01 at verizon.net. She's also on the web at pamreeves.com and on Twitter at Pamela underscore Reeves. Hello and welcome back, everyone. I'm John M. Hawkins. The show is My Strategy, and we're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network in TuneIn Radio. Well, if you're just joining us, welcome. The show is all about personal development, helping us to be the best we can. Before the break, we were talking about some of the common types of thinking, thinking modes, we're talking about the, the thinking process and how we think, not what we think about. We talked about creative thinking, analytical thinking, critical thinking, concrete thinking, abstract thinking, divergent thinking. We covered it a little bit, and we also covered uh, convergent thinking as well. And there are, there are differences to the ways that you can think take in the information and process it. In this segment, I want to cover the power of divergent and covergent thinking. Got an article here by Smartstorming. The power of divergent and convergent thinking guide your group's thinking process to new heights of productivity. Isn't that what we're all about? Becoming as productive as we can, as effective as we can, as accomplished as we can, as motivated as we can. Maybe it comes down to just living life and being as fulfilled as we can. Whatever our desires or goals, understanding how we think can help us get there. One of the simplest, most valuable skills a brainstorm facilitator can facilitator can develop is the ability to read the direction in which their group's thoughts are flowing. Sounds like a mind reader at the fair. Just like the ebbing and flowing of tides of an ocean or river, collaborative thinking flows in one direction. I'm sorry, collaborative thinking flows in one of two distinct directions. 
It can diverge outward into broad, multi-directional, expansive exploration of ideas. Divergent. Or two, it can converge inward, narrowing focus in an effort to judge, select, and eliminate ideas. One is an infinite number of possibilities searching for an option that is most effective. That is divergent. Convergent is you have the set of options defined and you try and choose which is the best one. Now, both of these thinking modes are important. The question is, when do we apply them? Divergent and covergent thinking. Article goes on to say, divergent thinking opens the imagination to all possibilities, while covergent thinking analyzes and chooses from all of these possibilities. In a sense, divergent and covergent thinking are the yin and the yang of creative problem solving. Neither is superior to the other. Simply more appropriate for the task at hand. And both processes are essential to the ultimate success of any group idea generation session. So it's important to understand their relative benefits to identify when and under what circumstances each of these thinking is taking place and to learn how to guide the group back to the most appropriate and effective method of thinking. And isn't this what leadership is all about? In this case, they're talking about being able to control a group, focus the group to be able to get them to think about the task at hand, but also to think about the strategy and what are the choices we should be making. The benefits of divergent thinking. Divergent thinking allows the group to generate many fresh ideas, new ideas as possible in a short time frame. During this process, all judgment is suspended. The group is encouraged to go for a quantity of ideas, not quality. Spontaneous, spontane, spontan, spontaneity will build upon others' ideas and push the boundaries of imagination. Even wild, crazy, audacious ideas are welcome. Audacious ideas. In fact, the motto for divergent thinking is everything is possible. Have you been in a meeting? Have you talked to somebody where they feel that everything is possible, that they talk about the endless possibilities of what we could do? And when you're in those discussions, how does that make you feel? Does it make you feel comfortable or does it make you feel stressed because you, you need an answer to a specific problem? Well, if you're feeling stressed and anxious at that point, perhaps covergent thinking is, is what you were expecting. You know, if you have a, a, ideas that are already been defined and you need to pick between them, this means that you really need to start focusing on which choice to make as opposed to the realm of possibilities. So it's important to look and listen to our bodies and listen to, you know, how we're feeling, whether it's an emotional response or a logical response, because the way we're solving that problem, the thinking modality, could be having an impact on us. And if it is, our gut's telling us something. Our gut's telling us that, wait a minute, are we thinking about this problem in the right way? Should we be looking at it from a different perspective, you know, where we need to do critical thinking or abstract thinking? And, and that's where these constructs come together. It's, you know, taking the best of the different modalities of thinking and using them effectively to help us solve our problems, help us come up with strategies that we can use to solve our problems. It says here that if divergent thinking is the casting the widest net possible, then convergent thinking can be thought of harvesting. It's the very best of the catch. Just as a funnel decreases the scope of a substance so that it fits through a narrow opening, convergent thinking narrows down a large number of ideas through the process of analyzing, judging, eliminating, and selection. Convergent thinking is ideally suited for thoroughly evaluating the merits of an idea or seeing how well it holds up to the scrutiny based on the pre-established criteria. When thinking process collide, as mentioned earlier, each of the two processes has an essential role to play in effective brainstorming. However, if they take place simultaneously or at the inappropriate time, 
they will quickly become an obstacle to success. You're listening to My Strategy. I'm your host, John M. Hawkins, coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. When we come back, we're going to explore what type of thinker you are. Do you know? We'll be right back. Mike Zorick, a three-time California state champion in Greco-Roman wrestling at 114 pounds. Mike, blind since birth, was born in Hartford, Connecticut. He was a six-time national placer, including two seconds, two-thirds, and two-fourths. He also won the veterans folk-style wrestling twice at 152 pounds. In all these tournaments, he was the only blind competitor. Nancy Zorick, a creative spirit, whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states. Her father, a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities, influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps. Ms. Zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves. Listen Saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for The Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting talk on the BBM Global Network. According to the American Nurses Association, there are approximately three and a half to four million nurses in the United States. So where do all these nurses work? What kind of roles do they have? What kind of education and training help to prepare them for so many different settings? What kind of impact do nurses have on patient outcomes? The World Health Organization has announced that 2020 will be the year of the nurse, honoring the 200th birth anniversary of Florence Nightingale, an international initiative called Nurse. Nursing Now is underway to raise the profile of nursing. The National Academy of Medicine has convened a committee to create the future of nursing 2020 to 2030 that will focus on how the nursing profession can create a culture of health, reduce health disparities, and improve the health and well-being of the U.S. population. Learn more and join Joyce Batchelor on All About Nursing, Wednesdays from 7 to 8 p.m. Central Standard Time on the BBM Global Network. Hello and welcome back, everyone. I'm John M. Hawkins. The show is my strategy, and we're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We're very happy to be here with you today. And if you're just joining us, my strategy radio show episodes are live on Saturdays, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Today we're talking about thinking modes. We've been exploring the increasingly important topic of how we think not so much what we think we're talking about the common types of thinking the power of divergent and convergent thinking we're helping you to identify your primary thinking mode and providing tips and tricks to help you think smarter all right right before the break we were talking about the power of divergent and convergent thinking and how as one author stated they were the yin and the yang they neither is better than the other, and they are both used symbiotically and can help us when we're trying to problem solve, trying to come up with new strategies, trying to, you know, really think strategically, act tactically. In this segment, I want to talk a little bit about how do you know what type of thinking, a thinker you are. I think it's important to kind of you know, look at this from different perspectives because there's the definition of something and you can talk about it. But at the end of the day, we don't really un- we might not really understand it until we get some examples. So I've got an article here by Tony Bernard where she goes into some examples from her perspective. She talks about, you know, convergent and divergent thinking and how it represents two different ways of looking at the world. Convergent thinker sees a limited, predetermined number of options. By contrast, a divergent thinker is always looking for more options. Many of us get stuck in convergent thinking and, and as a result, don't see the possibilities available to us. And while the author says many of us get stuck in convergent thinking, there might be many that get stuck in divergent thinking. So, you know, it's we need each other. She talks a little bit about convergent thinking, and as we know, it's uh, converging, so it means coming together. She then talks a little bit about the divergent thinking and how 
and how that is as well. She says here that um, an example to her is people are either sick or healthy. For many years after becoming chronically ill, there, there, there were those who only had two possibilities. They were either sick or they were healthy. Each night they would go to bed hoping to wake up. When I didn't consider myself to be sick, it was one or the other. Along with that, I thought I only had two possible courses of actions. She thought she could be a law professor and, or do nothing with her life. This may sound extreme, but that's how she saw the world at that time. Not wanting to do the latter, she forced herself to keep working, even though she was too sick to do so. It didn't occur to her that she could be in poor health, which could lead to not as much productivity later in life. And that was an example to her of what convergent thinking was. She also said another example is when she considered how many friends responded to her when she became ill. She only saw two possibilities for these those friends, those who stuck around and cared about her and those who didn't stick around and didn't care about her. And she wasn't able to see that people could drop out of her life and still care about her. So she said she's not dismissing the value of the convergent thinking. She says it's important cognitive tool, particularly in math, science, and others. But unless she's missing something, it could be silly to be open to other options than four if one is asked what is the what is two plus two. But she says Coven, convergent thinking has at times been a great source of suffering for her during her illness because it kept her from seeing beyond her limited vision of what is possible. And this is interesting to me because, you know, here you've got somebody that is, um, you know, trying to get unstuck with their life. And they've gone into this convergent thinking modality where they already have in their mind the list of options of what they can do. They've already accepted that this is the the options that they must choose from. And you can just imagine how limiting that is when you are trying to get better, you're trying to be the better person, you're trying to grow, but you have realized that you only have two options. And I think this is a real-world example where, in this case, Tony felt completely paralyzed by her choices it was either, you know, choice A or choice B. So I think this is where, in, in her mind, the divergent thinking can come in. And we're talking about, you know, a, a person, an individual here. But the group dynamics also can uh, go along these lines as well. And so it's so important for us to understand and to be able to identify when an individual, when a group is doing divergent thinking versus when are they doing convergent thinking. Because as a group facilitator, as a leader, you need to be able to understand or you need to ultimately come to an outcome. You need to be able to, uh, you know, perform some action. You need to have something tangible. And if you have somebody who's ruminating on their convergent thinking and they're going down a specific path, you know that they are going to choose one of the two paths that have been laid out before them. Now, one of those two paths might be the objective at hand and what we need to do at this point. However, in some situations, it's important for us to start thinking beyond just those two options. And it's important for us to start brainstorming on other ideas. It's important for us to start looking at the various possibilities. And the challenge becomes that, you know, as this individual Tony here uh, started to think only about those two outcomes, they became very, she became very depressed. And if you can imagine a large group setting, if a group, if some people in the group are, know that you have only a few options and you have to make a decision. Yet you have others who are of a divergent mindset and starting to come up with other options and other ideas. You can end up introducing tension in the group. You can end up introducing uncertainty. 
one group, one half thinks they're trying to focus on solving one problem, but the other group says, wait a minute, there's more. So that's part of why we need to understand these thinking modalities. And it really is understanding what the modalities are, and then we need to put in place strategies to help us uh, be able to control the group's thinking process so they can solve these problems appropriately. You're listening to My Strategy. I'm your host, John M. Hawkins, coming to live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. When we come back, we're going to talk about ways to inspire divergent thinking. We'll be right back. America is out of control. Today's capitalism and the approach to money is in fact the symptom of a more widespread pattern of excessive behavior. In his book, The Culture of Excess, How America Lost Self-Control and Why We Need to Redefine Success, clinical psychologist Dr. Jay Slosar portrays an America where excess fuels the drive to succeed. Dr. Slosar examines the cultural factors that lead to excess ranging from obesity to fraud to pervasive budget deficits. His book examines the powerful economic and social factors and their impact on our psychological well-being. Dr. Slosar explores the psychological impact of increasing narcissism, perfectionism, self-destruction, and our identity confusion. He offers recommendations for helping Generation Me become Generation We. Those who resist Slosar's message will want to avoid his discussion of regulation and his recent message that at this point, democracy must be more important than today's capitalism. Get his book now online or by visiting thecultureofexcess.com. MJ Domit is the owner of Expect to be Empowered, a company whose specialty is empowering people to live their best life by following their heart and accepting themselves unconditionally. After studying and making personal changes, MJ now focuses on giving others tools for self-empowerment. She provides individual and group workshops for people who are physically, emotionally, and spiritually blocked. Inspired by her work at Expect to be Empowered, MJ authored the book Waves of Blue Light, Heal the Heart and Free the Soul with a company empowerment cards she is a spirit book of the year gold medal living now book award winner and her book is a number one amazon bestseller in spirituality and was a 2012 gold medal winner recognized as the living now spirit book of the year an inspirational speaker mj will show you how you can repurpose every area of your life your life did not just happen to you you chose it which means you can change it visit www.expecttobeempowered.com or call 866-264-8024 Hello and welcome back, everyone. I'm John M. Hawkins. The show is called My Strategy, and we're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network in Tune In Radio. Right before the break, we were talking about how do you know what type of thinker you are, and we uh, uh, read uh, an essay, an article by Tony, who was focusing on convergent thinking, and as a result, she limited herself to some outcomes, some options, and for her, she felt that uh, it was important for her to do a little bit more divergent thinking, uh, which would help her look at other options. In this segment, uh, I want to talk a little bit about um, ways to inspire divergent thinking. Um, I think it's fair to say that, you know, as children, we start off as pretty concrete in our thinking and very literal. And, you know, we know we focus on what we focus on based on the options in front of us. So one of the hypotheses here is that we, all of us, could use a refresher, according to these authors, on divergent thinking. So, again, one type of thinking is not preferable or better than the other. But it is to say that we do need to understand the different types of thinking so that we can use them at the right time. So I've got an article here by Sarah Biggs. It's called 30 Ways to Inspire Divergent Thinking. She says, when we stop talking about creativity and innovation in abstract terms and start thinking about how they originate, we get to divergent thinking. Divergent thinking is more than thinking outside the box. It's thinking within the box or without the box. I'm sorry. And imposing structure later. The goal of divergent thinking is to generate as many different ideas about a topic and in a short period of time. It involves breaking down a topic into its various components, parts in order to gain insight about the various aspects of the topic. Divergent thinking typically occurs in a spontaneous, free-flowing manner. 
such that the ideas are generated in a random, unorganized fashion. Unexpected connections are often drawn. This type of thinking is found among people with personality traits such as nonconformity, curiosity, willingness to take risks, and persistence. Divergent thinking is not the same as brainstorming. Brainstorming is a technique that encourages divergent thinking, but it's only one of many. The research. The benefit of divergent thinking is huge, especially in a day and age when employers value skills over knowledge. Decades of research has shown that students who are exposed to divergent thinking methods early in their education become more creative, both immediately and later in life. Studies by Cornell University research team found that divergent thinking improves natural language proficiency and also performance. That same year, psychologists from the Netherlands revealed that divergent thinking leads to positive mood swings, while convergent thinking leads to negative mood swings. Patrick Ledwidge from the University of Nebraska says graduate students in particular could benefit from a heightened dose of of divergent thinking. So this article uh, basically talks about the differences between, you know, as we know, the divergent thinking process and the convergent thinking process. And there's a definite impact here to the mood swings and thinking positively versus thinking negative, negative. So they go on to talk about some of the ways that we can encourage this type of thinking. Um, but keeping in mind that both are important. So she says there's a lot of to be discovered about divergent thinking, but we know that it produces highly intelligent, creative individuals. Fail fa- fast, frequent failures. Make as many mistakes as possible and as quickly as possible means you're headed towards solving the right solution. Thank Google. You can find anything on Google these days. This doesn't mean students are in danger of forgetting how to learn and solve problems, but it shows that it gives you the ability to find information quicker and and come to conclusions. Zig where others zag. It can be highly productive to think differently, and it pays off in the long run. Respond to curiosity when it arises. Encourage people to answer their own questions now, not later. Defer judgment. Practice this yourself. Encourage others to practice it. This includes both criticism and praise. Combine ideas. Look for combining of ideas that might work together. Encourage anatomy and ownership. Autonomy and ownership. Praise individuals for their unique ideas. Help others appreciate how they learn. Brainstorm. Storm. Substitute. Adapt. Modify. Diversity. Can students put a material process or method to another use? Eliminate. Think in terms of removing, not adding. What can students do to eliminate the problem and inefficiencies? Brainwrite. This is a terrific exercise. Having a group of students brainstorm first on sticky notes or index cards without speaking to each other. This encourages all voices to be heard and prevents people from having their ideas forgotten or not heard at all. Six Thinking Hats Pioneered by Edward de Bono, the Six Thinking Hats exercise encourages parallel thinking or viewing of a problem from different perspectives depending on which hat you're wearing. Discuss lateral thinking. Lateral thinking is a type of thinking that uses unorthodox or seemingly illogical methods to solve problems. Use concrete fans. Represent a problem as a central circle. Have students write down the possible solutions using a series of lines radiating from the outer circle. Be proactive. Start with provocative statements like we should abolish abolished standardized testing then students are asked to examine the consequences of the statement, benefits, and others. Try random input. Take a random object, a noun, and associate it with a problem they're thinking about. What are the connections? How can these connections be used to solve or expand the problem? Disapprove. Have students take the traditional view of something and challenge it. 
see if they can support their own position and use technology when possible. So those are some ideas of ways that you can drive divergent thinking. Um, a lot of this is done in, in group contexts where you need to solve problems or you need to come up with hypotheses or perhaps theories and, and ultimately prove those out. And that's where how we think is so important. How we think about information makes a difference. And we all have the ability to think in different modalities. We have the ability to be, you know, to be able to change the way we look at the world. But the hard part is knowing that we have the power to do that. And then we need to be able to know that when it is okay to turn that power on. So if you're in a group situation and having a conversation and people are focusing on two specific outcomes and you know there's a third, it might be time to do divergent thinking. However, if you're in a crisis and there is a situation that needs to be tackled and there's divergent thinkers, it might be time to employ the convergent thinking. You're listening to My Strategy. I'm your host, John M. Hawkins, coming live from the BVM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. When we come back, we're going to talk about how you can put your plan in place. We'll be right back. French Rastafarian baker Chef Hugues Mott is a fourth-generation baker and has worked in 11 countries across three continents. Born in Mulhouse, France, he began apprenticing in his father's bakery at age 12 and has devoted his life to learning cultures of the world from inside kitchens across the globe. He also teaches traditional French baking by hosting demonstrations in classes, and his passion for baking is reflected in his delicious confections. With a deep respect for discipline and his Rastafarian way of life, Sheikh Uvmat exemplifies commitment to tradition and culture in a global world. Traveling extensively and combining a myriad of flavors into his recipes, Chef Ugmat brings a unique approach to baking. To read more about the French Rastafarian baker, visit www.frenchchefoug.com. That's H-U-G-U-E-S. Bon appétit and bless up. Hello and welcome back, everyone. I'm John M. Hawkins. The show is called My Strategy. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We're very happy to be here with you today. And in case you missed this broadcast, you can listen on iHeartRadio, Apple, iTunes, or many of the other digital platforms out there. And if you'd like to have something covered on the show, you can send an email to me at talk at johnmhawkins.com. Let's talk at johnmhawkins.com or give me a call at 844 my strategy. So today we've been talking about what type of thinker are you? I think it's very important for us in this day and age to really think about how we think and not what we think about. Thinking skills are becoming increasingly important. Critical, strategic, entrepreneurial, abstract Divergent, convergent thinking, all different ways that we can think, modalities that we can think uh, to solve problems, answer questions, and more. So what is our default thinking mode? Each one of us has a default thinking mode, or some of us you know, are, have the ability to use different modalities. But what, what is your modality? Are you a creative thinker? Are you analytical are you a critical thinker, a concrete thinker, abstract thinker, divergent thinker, or covergent thinker? I think it's important that while you might have a forte in one of these thinking modalities, it's important for us to realize that there is value in all of the different ways we can think. And that is how we can bring diverse thoughts into a particular brainstorming or solutioning session to come up with the best solution for us. Now, for many of us, if we start focusing on our own our own world, getting too entrenched in a specific thinking modality, it can be negative. It can be detrimental to us, and it's not going to help us from a personal development perspective. And that's where working with others, reaching out to others, you can start to realize that maybe you have been limiting your thought process. And as a result of that, it hasn't been helping you, you know, get to your end goals. 
We then talked about the power of divergent and covergent thinking and how divergent thinking opens us up to the imagination of all the possibilities and with all the possibilities laid out. We then can start to determine the effectiveness of each one of those possibilities. Covergent thinking, on the other hand, is the analysis from all the possibilities that were identified, or in some cases, extreme cases, one looks at things from a um, you know black and white perspective where there's only two options, and that can have detrimental effects. And it's important to understand if you are thinking along those lines and get some help. Uh, there's lots of benefits to divergent thinking. So we talked a little bit about some of the examples, and Tony uh, shared her story in an essay or blog post on where how she thought that people were either sick or healthy. She thought she could either be you know, um, a lawyer or she would have no job at all. And there are people who think like that, and that's where divergent thinking can help them. It can help them with all the options. It can help them figure out what are some other things we can do. And divergent thinking is something that, while you know, you have the ability to to do, we also want to think about it from the perspective of let's get to solutions quickly. Let's test these. So f- fail fast. You know, zig where others zag. Rearrange. Respond to curiosity. Defer judgment. Brainstorm, and much more. And ultimately, it's going to come down to us having to break our old patterns and consciously prioritize and put new ones in place. Well, that's all the show we have for today. Pleasure being with you, and we'll see you next time. This has been My Strategy with your host, John M. Hawkins. Listen each week as John reminds us that just like elite athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of their coaches, he is here to help you achieve your highest goals possible. Here each week on My Strategy. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.